Here's problem 210. An object is thrown downward with an initial t equals zero speed of 10 meters per second from a height of 60 meters above the ground. At the same instant, t equals zero, a second object is propelled vertically upward from the ground level with a speed of 40 meters per second. At what height above the ground will the two objects pass each other? Well, we've got two objects, and we have separate kinematics going on with each of them, but the um, combining fact is the fact that they're thrown simultaneously. So they're going to have the same time within their kinematics. So that might be something that's very useful. Let's see if we can see what's going on here. We've got um, a first object being thrown and our distance above the ground is 60 meters and this object is being thrown downward with initial velocity of 10 meters per second. So for this first, let's call it a ball instead of an object, for this first ball our initial velocity is 10 meters per second and we're going to use that velocity direction to help define our positive direction. So our positive direction for this problem will be downward in the same direction as our initial velocity. Okay, if that's true and the acceleration of gravity is always down towards the center of the Earth, that would make our acceleration positive and be a positive 9.8 meters per second squared, which kind of makes sense because if we threw it down like this, the speed of the ball would increase and that would be a positive acceleration making the speed increase like that. Okay, uh, it's going to pass the other ball at some particular height which we don't know, so we're going to just call that height h. However, in our throw downward, we will have a displacement, let's call it delta y1, that reaches that to that height. All right, so that's what we're going to have. We don't know what that is, and we don't know what our time is to that point. We also don't know what our final velocity will be to that point as well. We have a second ball propelled upward and the initial velocity on that is 40 meters per second. So let's write that. And I'm going to use that initial velocity direction to define up as positive. If I do that with acceleration of gravity always down towards the center of the earth then that would make our acceleration in this case a negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We're also going to have a displacement from the ground going like this. That will be our delta y2 which we don't know but we do know that it should be equal to the height h because that will be defined from the ground as well. And then we have our time t2 which we don't know either. So that is our second situation right there. Now one defining feature is that these two balls are thrown simultaneously. So it should be true that t1 is equal to t2 is equal to is just some time t. Let's write it like that. Also, we know that um, we have this displacement delta y1, which is positive, and this delta y2, which is positive, and the two of them added together make up this total distance of 60 meters. So it's true that uh, delta y1 plus delta y2 should equal 60 meters. We can use these things to help us. Let's write our equations of motion for each ball. For the first ball, we have that our um, displacement, delta y1, is equal to our initial velocity plus one-half initial velocity times time plus one-half acceleration times time squared. So this is going to equal 10 times t plus one-half times 9.8 times t squared. So this is equal to 10t plus 4.9 t squared. 
as our delta y1. Nice to know. For our delta y2, we have that that is equal to v naught t plus one half acceleration t squared, and that is equal to 40t plus one half times a negative 9.8. And fit all this on here times t squared. So this would be 40t minus 4.9t squared. Okay, and that is our delta y2. We stated that delta y1 plus delta y2 should equal 60. So we have. 10t plus 4.9t squared plus 40t minus 4.9t squared is equal to 60. I can see that my 4.9t squared and my negative 4.9t squared cancel out and I now have that 50t equals 60 or t is equal to 60 divided by 50, which is 1.2 seconds. Nice to know. Always want to know that. But the question was, what was the height above the ground where the two passed each other? We just found the time it took for either ball to get to that point, either from the ground or from the 60 meters up. But we want to find the height above the ground. Well. We see that our height above the ground, h, let's use green here, that right there is the same as our delta y2. So if we can plug in this time into delta y2, we can get our height. So h should equal delta y2, and that is going to be equal to 40 times t, 1.2, minus 4.9 times t squared, 1.2 squared. If we figure that out, we get 40.9 meters. So that's our answer. The height above the ground where these two balls pass each other is 40.9 meters.